Hello there, it's me. I know it's been a little while since I put anything up on YouTube. Um, yeah, just been busy. It turns out when you work full time and stream on, you know, all the days of the weekend, your your social responsibilities pile up. And so during my time off work, I've been spending a lot of time catching up with people, doing stuff with friends and family. It's been nice, um, but it means I've kind of let YouTube go. But this week. It's going to be a little bit of a content week for me. I'm going to try and put a YouTube video up probably every day, something like that. Um, see what I can do, see if I can come up with the right ideas. Um, so that is the plan for now. Today, we're going to be looking at a siege by the Jade Dragons against the Camelot Kings that went awry. Which is not pronounced Ori, in case any of you have only ever seen it written down. A-W-R-Y. I know that I had that problem when I was like 13, probably, so... Now you know. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to touch on this siege by the dragons versus the kings because I feel like it has been a fairly consistent problem across the iterations of this dragons roster. Um, I think, you know, all the way back to, you know, Rival and Ghost, they've had issues where they don't take their time enough on sieging and they run into problems because of it. A lot of the times they do get away with it because they tend to be very, very far ahead because they're a very, very good team. Um, and maybe, you know, I, I was wondering if maybe it isn't a pattern. We just see them in these winning positions more often. So it's as in it's not an anomaly compared to other teams. We just see them in these dominant winning positions more often where sieges shouldn't go wrong. And they do go wrong for them when they lose a little bit of concentration because they're in the lead so much. Um, and maybe it's not um, a pattern. I tend to think it is a pattern it kind of to me it seems like the dragons are such a good team in the early game because they really commit on calls and they're really decisive and they punish any perceived mistake made by the other team and that's why people consider them you know a really strong early game team it's not necessarily that they draft early game but once they see a mistake um, around a buff spawn they exploit it and they don't let go of the advantage they have around that and they keep going and they're always there on time and they're always committing on the play and they don't get caught out and they don't end up too late and they commit to the call and I wonder if that kind of um, very strong shot calling and strong decision making and let's go let's do this attitude could be a detriment when it comes to these sieges and that could be what leads to them being in these sort of winning positions. I think this is off to the side a little bit. Um, these winning positions and then maybe throwing a little bit. And now it's not flat. Sorry, I'm messing this up, haven't I? Um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look at the game. Let's have a look at the game. So this was just from... Let's check the date on it. This was from the end of August. So, yeah, not too long ago at all. Um... And we will be checking this one. I think it's from last... Was it last week's SPL? SPL Phase 2 Week 8? Yeah, it's probably last week's, isn't it? Um, so it's from last week's SPL. J Dragons vs Camelot Kings. Game 1. This is a game that J Dragons actually ended up winning. Spoilers. Uh, but the Kings won the set. But this stage in the game. Let's just have a quick look at the stage of the game. 8 and 0 oh for the Dragons. They're up about 12,000 gold. Uh, they've got FG on all five. They've got a couple red buffs. They've got a Yamoja. They've got a great comp for this. One thing that it is worth knowing, however, on the other side for the Kings, they might be a long way down, but they have a really good base defense comp. Uh, they don't need to back quite so much because they've got the Hells healing there for them. Um, there is a Divine and a Pesty and a Tainted and a Serb Passive and a Sir Kettle there to deal with that. So there's quite a lot of anti-heal. Um, but some of it's going to come out, come through when they're out of combat or not within range of the Serb Passive and the Tainted Steel at the very least. Um, Sir Kettle can't be on all five of them. Some heat, so some healing is going to come through. Merlin is very, very good on base defense because he has a couple of sets of skills. He can use his skills to poke and to clear the wave. And he has big area control with that, you know, arcane stance and the frost stance. Um, the ones in both those stances give a lot of area control while clearing the wave from a safe distance. Um, so he's very strong, and Ymir is very strong, because he can put his wall up in front of the, the Phoenix. I'm sure we'll see Genetics do that in just a second. So you can stop the auto attacks coming through when the other team gets a chance to walk into the Phoenix when your mage skills are down. Um, you can stop the autos coming through. So I am blocking somebody's cam, but it's just going to be the way it is. I'll let you have a quick look at the cam now. Who is it? Is it? 
Oh my god, it's fine. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's let's get into this. Let's see. Oh, and the other thing to know is this Phoenix is down. Um, so they've they've gone FG and they've gone straight up the solo side of the map um, to push the Phoenix here, even though they got the Geo Phoenix before, which probably facilitated them getting the free fire. So, all right. I guess the number one thing I'm going to say is they should never be fighting this solo Phoenix in a 5v5. That is the biggest mistake for me that a lot of pro teams make a lot of the time. Once you have a side Phoenix, as, as far as I'm concerned, the game is done. If you get the duo side Phoenix, the game should be done. You shouldn't mess up from there unless the other team has some kind of great global map presence. But even then, you can play around that. Um, in this game, the Dragon should have waited on this solo side siege until the fire... Maybe they should have sent someone over to, to duo to push the waves up. Maybe send Sam over there or something. But they shouldn't have been taking a 5v5 on the solo side Phoenix. There's no reason for it. The fire minions will eventually force someone over to the left-hand side of the map for the Kings. And so... With a bit of patience, the dragons have just got fired. They've got a full four minutes on it. Um, well, they've got three minutes thirty on it. You can see the top left, but yeah, you should never be taking a five v five on this. So let's see what else goes on here. Let's have a look. It's kind of loud. I'll turn that down slightly. We got the smite music in the background. Here we go. And the cat. Look, they they initially seem to be being quite patient. They're at least waiting for the the solo waves. I don't know if uh, PBM's going at three that to get it to hurry up. But let's see how they execute on this team fight. Twig waiting in the wings, looking for an engagement himself. Um, Natrioid has his double crit online, so he's going to be swinging if he gets the hit anybody. No spectrals thus far on the side of the dragon. So. And there you see big man's damage. You can see it first person, right? So you see he throws the one out, does damage to PBM, stops them initiating, pokes them, and clears the wave at the same time. And he can come all the way back here. Look how safe he is. Wall has gone up from genetics to make sure, I guess, to make sure nobody got 3'd in, or to make sure they can't hit the Phoenix, I imagine. Oh, Pan the Cat's on this side, so he can get a couple of autos on the Phoenix here. Still basically full HP. Um, I would have spectated this in game, by the way, but I don't think the replay was up. Twig engages, looks for a big engage himself. There's the ult, I think hits three people. Here comes some autos. Good disengage from the dragons initially, by the way. That was just blink call from Twig. Um, they lost beads on Mike and frenzy on Mike. Spirit robe was proc there, so Mike was nice and safe. I would assume Magi's was lost as well from Sam. So let's see what they do here. They're frenzy and go back in. Um, the arcane one is there. Was it called Eclipse? Is there to stop them coming through in the middle and to stop the minions coming through? And a great wall by. You see the position of Panda Cat here, right? He wants to hit this Phoenix. They've called. Let's go. Let's all in the Phoenix after that fight. Great wall from Genetic stops um, any autos. Coming through from Panda Cat, stops Sam getting in easily, stops Fine OK doing what he wants to do. Um, so this Phoenix is going to be pretty safe. This whole yield, not great. I guess it was just a space control one from Panda Cat to discourage the Kings from staying in here so that he could try and hit the Phoenix. But the wall from Genetics is perfect. Here comes Variety, good steps forward. Fine OK will ult. And let's see what they get here. It looks like Ram ulted out. That was an interesting emoji. I don't love that. From Mike, I don't know if it blocks the sides here. It looks like, is there a Phantom? It looks like there is a Phantom for Genetics, and he has procced it. So he popped the Phantom to make sure they can get out. Four ults, by the way, used here by the Dragons. There was uh, a Hoi ult used here. The Raijin ult, I'm not even sure. Can we go back and have a look at who the Raijin ult was hitting? There he goes. He ults here. Um, tries to hit Netroid. He dashes out. Is that dash back up for the Emojo? Oh, wow. OP. Because he comes back down after sending out one snipe to try and stay safe. Smart by Natroid. Does cancel that ram ult more often than most ADCs that we see. And also droggers on this, by the way. It is worth knowing. There is a drogger here. But then, let's see what was used there. Four ults on this side. Three ults on this side. No, two ults on this side, rather. Just Erlang and ram. Uh, Merlin and, and Hell are going to benefit from these ult trades, worth knowing. Not something that comes up too often, but ult trades generally favor teams who have characters who are stance switchers because they don't have ults. Um, so Merlin and Hell still in the same spot they were in before those four ults were used, essentially. Um, no relics used, I think. You got beads by Twig and beads by Variety. So those are the big ones on the other side. You're in, you're in a good spot relics-wise. Genetic still has his ult. And Sam still has his. Okay. So now this fire minion wave is starting to get to where you want it to be. I think, I think I'm fine with all of this play. I don't think it was efficient exactly by the dragons the way they traded out here but if they just stop now and pause and wait for somebody to have to go over to the geo side of the map i think this is a good play this geo side phoenix will be respawning soon so somebody has to attend to that 
fire minions are going to start hitting the titan anyway so somebody has to attend to that also so let's see what they do do though looks like so we said that sam's the only one who has his ult left and sam sees variety knows he has no beads so wants to hard engage onto him he sees an opportunity he takes it i think again as i said yeah you'd be better off just staying cam here wall is going to come out from genetics to stop the push to stop the follow-up again really good ymir play by genetics fantastic base defense character and the turnaround comes through sam gets blown up basically on the wall and all of a sudden the camelot kings have a kill and they're essentially back in this game they don't have to deal with this fire anymore um let's see where it goes from here now have to wait 45 seconds. Twig just goes to his speed. And they decide that Twig looks like a tasty snack. Final K jumps over Twig. I'm not sure Twig should be doing this. If he got caught out there and died, he has no beads. Let's see. How does he live here? There's the jump in. Here comes the damage. And he just manages to get away from Yumoja 3. I think he did whoever winged blade that procced? He did. Okay, that makes sense. Wingblade got him out there, and there comes the chase. Another fantastic wall by Genetics. Wall, as F Dot would say. Uh, there's one kill. Panda Cat going to die as well. Genetics now picks up one, and that's three for zero in favor of the Kings from a 12,000 gold deficit. They were at against five Fire Giants with their Geocide Phoenix down. They're going to get their Geocide Phoenix back up. They get three kills. They reduce the deficit by 3k against the enemy Fire Giant. Um, they get a chance to push all these waves out and get ready for the next Fire Contest. And just everything came up good for the Kings there. Everything there was great. They're not too bad on Relics. Their carries still have both Beads and Aegis. Big Man and Netroid didn't even have to use anything Relics-wise in those fights. When you're using ults like Yumoja ult, Serket ult, Serbalt, Hoyi ult, Raijin ult, and you're not forcing out either of the carries relics, um, you know something's gone pretty wrong. So yeah, I think it's just a case of rushing. It was interesting as this game went on. I think that's enough. That's enough of it. Oh, well, watch the replay. We get a replay. Okay. This is a great wall by Genetics. Really, really good. Like, perfectly positioned. And Sam, not able to get out in time. Just Sir Cat, a little bit slow on the three out. Does take a little bit of wind up there to get over that wall. Maybe could have dashed to the right and then jumped out. But, I mean, you know. It's, uh, that's, that's a bit nitpicky by me. I think it was just a bad engage. A bad decision. They should have waited for the Geo side of the map to be pushed. I wonder if he just wanted to get his uh, ult on cooldown. Because he had 40%. He was like, ah, if I get that on cooldown, we're crushing it. But, yeah, that was all I wanted to talk about with regards to that. I think... It is a pattern for the Dragons, whether that's just because they're, they're the best team um, at getting into those winning positions or not, I don't know. Um, and I, I have a little bonus clip here. It's just, I, I just found, I just found this replay interesting. It was, I don't remember it happening. Um, I think maybe it, did I stream this game? I probably did and I just don't remember it anyway. Um, but it's, uh, I, was, I was looking for other clips of a similar nature and I didn't find them. I didn't go hunting too far, but I didn't find them. I went and watched another Kings versus dragons match and the end to game three of that one was a lot of fun so i figured i would show that replay let's have a look oh what the i've gone to the wrong screen okay we're there it's collapsing no hunter for one side no mid laner for the other captain twig dies to sam for soccer and there's a stun connecting the on the variety as well and how fast will that osiris melt? yeah this is just a fun ending it's a fun ending there's nothing really i wanted to analyze about it other than the the dragons are smashing this fight they're crushing it variety does he die as well, or is he just invincible? Nice three. So now it's what, a 3v5? PBM gets... Oh, this is when PBM played Gilgamesh. I do remember this. Damage comes through. PBM gonna die. Sam try to get it. Gets Netrioid. And now it's just 1v1. Panda Cat versus Variety. Now Panda Cat versus the Titan. He's got the ass. He broke. Why'd he do it? Oh my god, he gets it. Oh my god. We'll Hurry was on the way anyway. I think the game what would have ended it either way, but it was fun. I like that. Uh, I liked that ending. I love that uh, Dolson going like squeaky casting mode as well. It's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I think that was it. That was all I wanted to show you with regards to that. Hopefully have some more content this week. I'm planning on doing a little piece on, uh, on Valkyries and whether... For phase three, they should get to play one of their games in a set on EU ping. So that's going to be an interesting one. I'm expecting some...
controversy on that, uh, which will be fun. It's always fun. It's not. It's not fun to have controversy, to be honest. But you know what? It's my related controversy is fine. Um, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm going to be covering. I think tomorrow. I'm trying to get some opinions from some people other than me because I think I'm a bit biased in favor of the idea. So uh, I'm chatting to some pros who are against it, and, and I'm trying to chat to some of the Valks as well who are for it, and try and come up with a more nuanced viewpoint, I suppose. Um, and kind of present the argument from both sides and we'll see how I do on that. You can let me know tomorrow when that video comes out. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, I will be putting, yeah, I'll be putting videos out all week, hopefully. So uh, keep an eye out. Remember and hit the bell if you want to see them really, really fast. Otherwise, I mean, just don't subscribe though. Subscribing's cool. You could subscribe. Um, you could like, you could comment. Let me know if there's any other things you'd like to see this week. I'm, I'm looking to do some more replay analysis in client, but it's just a pain because the replays aren't there. Like, I'm just, that's, that, to be frank, they just, they're not putting the demo files up for a lot of the games. And so it's frustrating. And so I'm kind of like just going towards YouTube videos, but as in the YouTube replays of the games, but it's not ideal. I'd rather do it in client. I'll see if I can if I can find a good game, or if any of you guys have a good idea of a game or a play that you'd like broken down, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, cool, that's enough. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow again. Peace.